Hello everybody, I'm Mark Evers and today I'm going to go over the process that I use for shooting paintings. Now, the process is pretty simple. I basically get two lights that I use to light it from either side and I use two on either side versus one right behind is, is because from either side because the light's coming in on an angle, you'll actually get to see the texture of the canvas, whereas if you sh the light is directly behind it, shooting at it, it's more apt to make it so you're not going to see the texture of the canvas. So that's uh, the reason for that. Um, a couple of other key points is camera position. When you're shooting, you want to make absolutely sure that your camera is level this direction and this direction front to back, because you get if you get that off a little bit, you're gonna end up with your you having to correct your picture for a little bit of of uh, the, basically the picture the painting itself not being square. Tripod, so I knew I'd be in an equal distance there as well too. Also, if, I, if you in, in my particular case, my camera has built-in level in the camera, so. I can easily make sure that I'm shooting level, but if you don't have a level, then the, you can get a, uh, you know, a level that can go into your hot shoe, and you could use that for setting up the, the camera so it's level. I'll leave the link below in the description just so you have an idea of what it is that I'm talking about. Um, and for this particular case, I'm using my Sigma 105 macro just because it's a nice sharp lens, and there's not much lens distortion in it, but... Um, any lens will do. You just have to keep keep into account that the the better the lens, the more more likely or the more unlikely it is you're going to have to do much lens correction. Um, and also, when you're lighting it, you want to make sure that your lights are nice and even distance from your painting. Uh, in this particular case, both these lights are the same, so I basically just measured out the distance from from the painting to the lights. If, if you're shooting with lights that are maybe not the same power or a different brand, you might have to play with them to try and get the, the power so it's even on the painting itself. Um, in a case like this, this would be where a light meter would come in handy because then you'd be able to check the, the power of each light individually to balance them out the way you want it. Uh, the settings I'm using today, I'm shooting at ISO uh, 100. The aperture is at f8, and my shutter speed is at one one sixtieth of a second. But if you're on a tripod, shutter speed's not as important when you're doing something like this. One other thing that I do when I'm taking pictures of paintings is I use one of these. This is a passport color checker. I'll also leave a, a link down below so you you know where you can possibly purchase this and what the, the product is. But what I will do when I'm using this is I will actually hold it in front of the painting, take one picture, then I would take it away and then take my, my good picture and then within Lightroom I can um, basically create a custom profile based off the colors that it detects off of this, this uh, passport color checker. So that's something that's important to be able to get the colors as accurate as possible. Otherwise, in your post-processing, you might be messing around a little bit more to uh, get everything as accurate as you want. Now, I'll take a couple of pictures here just to show you now what we end up with. And as I mentioned, I would also take a picture using this, so uh, I'm not going to do that for, for this just because you don't need to watch me take a picture of a passport color checker. Anyways, um, I am going to do some processing and I'm going to show you the, the finished results. Hopefully this has helped you out somewhat and if you have any questions regarding this procedure, just leave them down below and I will answer them as best as I can. Thank you. Hello everybody, back from editing things went pretty good. Um, one thing that I did forget to mention, which I'll bring up now, is that when I actually framed this in the camera, I left myself a little bit of room 
all around the picture. That way, if I did have to make some minor adjustments, either a bit of rotation or if I got a little bit of lens distortion, it was easy enough to fix. But uh, in my case, with the lens I was using, there was minimal distortion, so all I had to do was just crop it into the edges to get what I wanted. And this is the final result after printing. Uh, one thing to note is that this I don't have any matte paper or, or, or any um, uh, like a like a, a canvas type paper. Uh, that would be ideal for printing because then you get a little bit of glossy paper or even a like a luster paper. It's just a little bit too shiny, so it doesn't give you a good accurate accurate representation of the of the final work. So. I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but the, the blues are just a little bit too rich. And uh, I could probably adjust the saturation in the in the computer to fix it. But like I said, ideally, you'd want to use use a, a matte-type paper to, to, to ideally get what you want. And uh, otherwise, it turned out pretty good. In Lightroom, I didn't have to do that much. I basically, like I said, I created a profile using the, the, the passport checker. And I use that profile on the the, the final picture to get the colors pretty good. Like I said.